As a cop, the question I get asked the most is generally, who is the biggest criminal in the Inazuma 11 universe? Now, you may think it is this bad lad, but... You're wrong. There's even bigger ones out there. I've scoured through every single player's bio information description in Inazuma 11 1, and I'm here to tell y'all the 20 biggest criminals out there, even worse than Mr. Ray Dark himself. Let's do this! Cop style! Bios are one of the most underrated parts of an Azuma 11 in my opinion. There's so much information, there's so many jokes, there's so many interesting tidbits hidden away in this one sentence of, of character information hidden in the player binder. Sure you can look at them for formations, but I feel like most people's tendencies when looking at the enemy team formations is to look at their levels, their special moves, and then click exit. Not even pay attention to the beautiful, beautiful bios. Well, I am different. I looked through every single um, in a Zoom 11 one player binder bio, and today I'm breaking down who is the most criminal in a Zoom 11 player. Now that might seem like a bit of a stretch, a bit of a jump, a bit of a bit of a reach from going from just bio to criminal, but it just kind of came to me. It just kind of made sense to me as I was reading through them all, and I was like, wow. There are some bad people in Azuma 11. We should talk about them. These are 14 year old kids and they're getting up to some hefty little crimes. So without further ado, let's break down the top 20 in Azuma 11 criminals. Now, I'm going to just say basically that um, I, I'm only including one crime per entry. So for instance, drug possession would only be one spot. There wouldn't be like number 15 and number four are both drug possession. Only number four could be drug possession. Um, but I can include multiple characters under one entry. So for instance, number four could be, I don't know, Steve and Jim, both for drug possession. But let's go. Our first crime is not quite something that's illegal, but something with implications that are illegal. And this is running a gang. Now, running a gang isn't illegal, but, you know, running a gang, I feel like it, it, it invokes the thought of criminal offenses. Criminal, so many different crimes, because a gang is essentially just a group of criminals, if you really think about it. Probably not, but if you really think about it. And so we have two little gang runners. First of all, Vern Ironfist, who's reputed to have um, once had a gang of over 100 members. Quite impressive for a 14-year-old, still criminal. And then we have Keth Klaus, who looks about seven and used to be a gang leader. Keyword being used to. This kid probably ran a gang when he was five. That's quite impressive. Shout out to Keth Klaus. Still go to jail, please. Another crime that isn't quite illegal, but I feel like under specific circumstances makes you go, hmm. And that is um, Vince Bull over here, who even when sick or dying, he won't risk his perfect attendance record. That's all well and cool, but COVID-19. This guy's gonna turn up to a school and spread COVID. What the hell, mate? That's not cool. May not be an actual crime, but it's a moral crime, and I don't respect that either. Fun fact, did you know that intimidation is actually a crime? You can get arrested for simply being too epic scary. And so we have Marty Grass, who scares p smaller children by wearing a scary mask. Shouldn't have to explain why that's intimidation. And then we also have Zinn Gibber, who is cold and surly, and it doesn't take much for him to make people cry. Now, I don't know about you, but if I saw someone being cold and surly and getting tears out of someone, I wouldn't assume it's because they've handed them a 20 quid note. Probably more because they've intimidated them, scared them, and then... They should get arrested for their crimes or go to jail. Our next one also isn't quite a crime, but if you really think about it and think about its implications, it could be. So we have Braden Bakewell, who likes baking bread and sells himself at lunch times. Okay, well, sounds to me like, mate, you're running a black market of bakery. For all we know, he could be putting weed in those bakes and selling them at lunch times to fellow youths. Not cool, mate. Not cool in the slightest. I find there's a bit of a black market going on here. The baking world has found its new competitor, its new um, little insider, its new criminal. And I'm personally not a fan of it. Get Braden Bakewell arrested, pretty please. 
Guile Crockett is able to lie with a straight face. Do not believe a word he says. Sounds to me like he's making false statements, which is an arrestable offense. Um, it is illegal to make false statements. It's not illegal to just a lie, but if, say, if he's being in front of a trial and he's breaking his oath by lying, then that is pretty poor. So, Guile Crockett, lying is not winning here. That's not a saying. You get what I mean. Don't lie. This video feels like a big PSA to little kids. Don't do drugs. Well, our next one is another crime you may not know about. Uprooting wild um, flowers and plants and that in public areas is not allowed, unsurprisingly. And so we have Antophilia, who loves eating honey and even picks the flowers at school. And that is arrestable. It's not cool. It's, if you're picking part of the flower, it's fine. But in certain places, if you're picking the entire flower, that's going to get you arrested. Sorry, Antophilia. Get out of here. Another thing that may not strike you as illegal, but is in some places, is dumpster diving. Now, um, in certain places, from my understanding, now this is from two seconds of research, don't count me on this, but um, bins are like, technically the thing that's in them bins are property of the rubbish people, and so if you're stealing from that, you're stealing from them. And stealing isn't okay. So sorry, Ruta, who likes collecting interesting bits of junk from rubbish bins, but you're not off the mark this time. Another thing that may not strike you as illegal, running away. If a kid runs away from their parents, it's not on and in some places is illegal. Ron away, despite having the best name ever, is a stubborn kid who fled his um, school where his parents chose for him. That's not on. Running away gets you nowhere, mate, except the back of a dirty, dirty jail cell. And who knows what will happen there. They want to footballs in jail, mate. Speaking of slave labor, Finn Attic works everyone to the ground if he's put in charge. Into the ground! This man is commanding his peers, his fellow 14-year-olds, to, into doing who knows what. Probably running his drug operations. Get to jail. Number 11 is Glenadier, a fan of army rangers, scales the school walls as practice. Now, if he's scaling those school walls in school hours, I don't think that's too bad. But if he's scaling those school walls out of school hours, that is not on. And you, sir, are trespassing. Not cool. Number 10, we have Nathan Jones, aka Mask who is a bit dangerous with a grass cutter on the pitch. Now, I'm classing this under possession of weapons. And while it isn't quite because we don't know whether or not he's actually possessing the grass cutter, it's just that if he had one, he would be bad. Whole nother slew of crimes comes from that. I'm also going to look at Scott and Guard for this bot, um, who is infatuated with sword battles and carries a wooden sword to school. This is none. Um, possession of weapons, unsurprisingly, from having a sword. Now, actually, having a sword, it has to be a certain kind of sword, like a curd sword, for instance, isn't cool and is illegal to possess. But certain ones is fine for some reason but yeah mostly scott and guard will get arrested for carrying that big juicy sword there's an innuendo there ollie webb ne uh, never learns from getting viruses while browsing the internet sounds to me like piracy because where else do you get viruses from other than downloading shady illegal stuff so for instance stuff like video games books music tv shows Porn. Who else knows what this guy is downloading? It could be anything. He could be infecting his mum's computer with all kinds of pornography, and I'm not, I'm not cool for that. I don't like that. I don't like the idea of that. Guy Forker likes campfires and starts one up at any opportunity. Sounds to me like a cheeky bit of arson. This man's going around starting fires at any opportunity. You know what that means? That could, that can not only be starting fires at camps. It could also be at, at your house, at school, at your dad's office. This man could be starting fires everywhere and burning people down without a second thought. Not on. It's not on. Let's go back to breaking and entering. Previously, we had trespassing. Now it's a bit more specific in its breaking and entering. We have Buster Lock. This sticky-fingered gangster can break any lock in three minutes flat. Well, his first crime is being called sticky-fingered. Who knows what that means? But he can also break any lock in three minutes flat. Shouldn't have to explain why that's a crime. You may think, hmm, that's not quite illegal. You know, he could just be breaking the locks in his own spare time. He is literally called a gangster. I think he might be a criminal. And we have Grover Baring, who loves celebrations and forces himself in, even if he's not invited. This guy's going to turn up to your 10-year-old kid's birthday party, saying that, oh, he just liked the look of the balloons, probably with Buster Lock at his side having broken down your door's lock. And again, criminals. Decorator may have the best name ever, but he slaps paint on anything that looks like it needs cleaning up or cheering up. Not on. Not on in the slightest. He could see a wall that looks slightly depressing. Pew, 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 
pew, and he's painted it in different color. Vandalism. It is vandalism, and I do not like that one bit. Unsurprisingly, vandalism is a crime, and if he's painting murals on the side of school buildings without their permission, that is not good. To me, it doesn't sound like anything that looks like it needs cheering up is not saying he asked for their permission first. That would should also be included in the bio. And number five, let's talk about fraud. We have Ed Dupee, who is taken in by Fad Medicine. He has every Miracle Cure product around. Sounds to me like he's selling fraudulent items, which is a crime. And we also have John Corder, who claims to keep his riches in a, in a safe, but really it's just full of junk. Well, if he's telling the bank that his, um, his riches are all in a safe, but he doesn't actually have them, he is committing fraud. John Corder definitely does not pay his taxes. Let's be honest, I'm not, I'm not cool for that. Yeah, neither of these two really do it for me. I felt like they're both just proper fraudulenters. I don't care if, if Ed Dupee just can tell that it's, um, it's, it's, um, not, well, no, he can't tell it's fake medicine. He's just going around selling what he thinks is real medicine. It's still fraudulent items. You're still committing fraud. You're still telling people this is real medicine and then selling them, I don't know, a leaf, a single leaf with apparently magic healing powers. Yo, who here hates gambling? All my homies hate underage gambling. And we have Vic the Grand, who makes more money than a dad does by playing the stock market. Obviously, gambling's not illegal, but a 14-year-old gambling? Hmm, bit illegal. And so this man, even if his family feels like his family support him and say, well done, keep gambling, mate, and he's obviously making cash off it and winning, which is the ideal way to gamble, he's still gambling at the age of 14, and if big 18-plus signs have taught me anything, it's that that's not cool. Number three... We have Dick Turban. First of all, if you're named Dick, you're kind of set for a life of crime. But this man's committing one of those blatant acts of criminality possible. And that is thievery. He appears to be a normal kid, but is really the town's mysterious thief. Oh boy, wonder if he's a criminal. Speaking of thievery, we also have Bandit, who will steal anything and only cares about getting rich. The fact his name is Finn Stone makes you feel like he's stealing some drugs. But uh, these two, yeah... A blatant thieves. You can't really get any more obvious than this. Number two, we have Buster Chops. He starts fights, but can't remember why. It's hard to stay mad at him. It sounds sweet and innocent, but amnesia will not hold up on the court of law. And this guy will start fights with anyone. Uh, apparently, you know, he just does a lot of physical assault in his spare time. And who knows where physical assault can take you? Murder is where it can take you. And it feels like this man's going to commit murder and say, oops, sorry, can't remember. And you're like, oh, look at him being sweet and innocent. But no, he's a criminal. Look out for him. He's the worst. Kill him. And at number one, we have someone who you might not think is the biggest criminal in the world. But when you take another look, you go, hmm, I see. And that is Patch Borgnine. He wants to be a cyborg specialist in the future. Now, when I think of cyborg, I think of a scene in a TV show called Invincible, where the guy makes, like, genuine little, hum like, terrifying cyborgs out of people, taking out their vocal cords and their frontal lobes. And when I hear Patch Borg and I want to be a cyborg specialist, that's what I think of. So man's committing so many different crimes. Murder, possibly. Possibly, you know, exp I'm sure experimenting with human is somewhere illegal. I'm sure, um, you know, fitting metal limbs onto people without their permission is probably illegal. And so, you know, taking off limbs and all that doesn't feel too legal. Especially without, I mean, without their permission, without consent is the main thing. So when I hear Patch Borgen, I want to be a cyborg specialist, the first thing that comes to mind is, wow, this man is a massive criminal. I don't care if it's for medicine. I don't care if that's, if that's what he's telling himself. Criminal. Patch Borgnine is a bigger criminal than Ray Dark. What else can I say? Thank you guys for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and all that other juicy, juicy, juicy stuff. I have been TXM hyphen Tom Spurs. It'd be an absolute pleasure having you here. See you guys in the next one, you beautiful people. Bye. We wanna say thank you to Levi.